Hi, my name is John Blair and I'm going to show you how to migrate a section plugin from Umbraco 7 to Umbraco 8. Okay, the agenda for this uh, video is uh, we'll take a look at the project plan. I decided to do a project plan as I wasn't quite sure what steps were involved. Uh, the plan made that uh, much clearer. Uh, then we'll take a look at the plugin as uh, how it looks in version 7 of Umbraco and uh, how it ended up looking in version 8 of Umbraco. Uh, finally, we'll take a look at the code changes to get from uh, version 7 to version 8. Okay, let's take a look at the project plan for this migration. We'll take a look at the main task column. We'll see the, the key items involved. Uh, first thing we, we want to do is, uh, this is a books plugin uh, section. So we want to migrate that C Sharp project. And we want to migrate it to .NET Framework version 4.7.2. Uh, we'll want to reference the Umbrico core packages, uh, core and web, again choosing the same version as the CMS so there's no uh, DLL conflicts. Uh, we'll then try to build that project and uh, resolve uh, compilation issues. Uh, as we resolve the compilation issues we'll do the migration to different components so we look at uh, fixing the compilation issues. We'll generally make code namespacing changes. We'll then create the section as it would be done in version 8. We'll create the dashboard. We'll create the database uh, and we'll update the API controllers and we'll update the tree controller. So that will largely get us to a point where all the C-sharp uh, material is being converted. After that, we then need to look at the back office code changes. The, this is uh, the area that uh, Angular changes will be made and uh, CSS less changes will be made. The back office uh, has changed quite considerably so what I had in my version 7 of the plugin was a number of scaffolding directives that created tabs for for doing edits etc uh, so essentially I rewrote those uh, to do equivalents on uh, version 8 and then uh, finally uh, as with most uh, uh, projects you, you you find a few unexpected issues so just listed uh, a couple here uh, and uh, that is basically the overview of uh, the approach to doing the conversion if you look in this plan uh, basically got if we look at the phase column four phases uh, convert the c-sharp project fix compilation issues back office code changes and unexpected issues. Uh, I have a run and to plan total. We'll give you a run uh, total of uh, how much effort is required. So this uh, project took about 32 hours, so four days. And if we look at the phase total, we can generally see that two days was spent fixing compilation issues and reworking the code to fall into the new way things are done in Umbraco 8 and two days were spent on the back office code changes uh, getting the tabs, panels uh, and new resources working. Okay, we'll take a look at uh, an overview of the plugin as, the, as it is on version 7 and then uh, take a look at uh, how it is on 
version 8 and then we'll take a look at the code. So this is uh, version 7. We've added a, a new section in here, Global Trade. Uh, that's my application. Uh, this plugin uh, essentially just uh, manages a set of books. So uh, what we have is the dashboard. Just get a welcome screen with the, the app logo. And then we have a settings tab uh, with some global settings and uh, a general save settings uh, down the bottom. Then we have a, a tree. Uh, it's only got uh, two nodes at the moment. Uh, one for books. And generally what uh, I do is uh, have a list of tree nodes. Then for each node in the tree, I'll have a list of tabs. So in this case, catalog, events, autobiographies, uh, the catalog uh, essentially a single tab will maintain the whole catalog so we could create a to create a book or we could edit a book and uh, we can look at the details uh, we could delete a book in which case we get a confirmation uh, we can cancel that or go ahead and delete so we'll get rid of the first book there so that's uh, generally what uh, that this plugin does and if we take a look on uh, the front office uh, we actually deleted that book so we could refresh and see that the book's gone uh, so it just displays a, a list of books uh, that we maintained if we now take a look at uh, version 8 uh, you'll see that the back office has changed quite significantly uh, so we add a new section uh, into the top menu we have our tree uh, as before uh, we have a dashboard with a welcome and we also have a settings uh, look and feel it's different but uh, quite similar in the sense you've got settings you can save those settings we then come to look at the books maintenance and like before we have a set of nodes in the tree and for each tree node we have a, a list of uh, tabs that we maintain so uh, and for this migration, I made it look like the settings examine management look and feel. So uh, this kind of panel header, with a panel body. Uh, and so what, what we can see, similar to before, we can create a new book. Again, I put uh, the buttons down the bottom right, just as a general convention. Uh, we can edit a book, uh, I change the layout of the properties just to be more consistent with the way that they're done in the content section. Uh, and that is basically how the tabs were migrated. Uh, so again, if we do a delete uh, dialogue service change to the editor service so we can uh, a fork in the road so that's gone so let's bin that so I'll leave just four books and then uh, if we take a look on version 8 of the, the website uh, uh, this website uh, uses an e-commerce package the e-commerce package hasn't been migrated yet so it looks slightly different to uh, version 7, but uh, this plugin uh, has been migrated and um, we've been that top book. So refresh, see it's gone, and there we have our books uh, migrated to version 8. Okay, let's take a look at the code for the migration now. 
so here we have the solution. Uh, it's got a number of things. Uh, main Umbrico CMS uh, website. Uh, it's got this uh, plugin that we'll uh, migrate. Uh, first thing that uh, we want to do is we change the the target framework to be 472. Uh, now, because uh, a framework brings in loads of extra DLLs and the references, I actually created a new project and then copied all the code in from the, the previous project just so that all the references will get uh, updated properly to 472. Uh, once we create a new project, then we'll pull in uh, the Umbraco packages into the solution. And if you notice something like, we want to make sure that uh, the packages that we get are the same version as the CMS project. So we pulled in uh, Umbraco core and Umbraco CMS core and Umbraco CMS web. Uh, that will keep the DLLs uh, the same as the main Umbrico uh, project and the Umbrico uh, website will reference the plugin so everything is kept in sync. Uh, but then the uh, first thing that uh, we do is uh, we want to migrate the section application. Now, previously we used to do that as a, an event handler, but uh, the package manifest has now been updated to include a section, uh, which actually make, make, makes a lot of sense. Uh, it was always uh, awkward editing config files with packages. So here we have the section is identified, in our case, global trade, we give it an alias. The other thing that uh, has changed is uh, dashboard sections. We used to have them in the dashboard config file, but now we just uh, put them directly into the package uh, manifest and here We'll see that we give it uh, an alias, uh, which section we want to include it in, which is our new global trade one, and the view for that particular dashboard tab. So we've got a dashboard welcome tab and the dashboard settings tab, and we give it the view uh, for both. The rest of the package manifest uh, uh, stays pretty much the same. The next item that uh, that we convert is the database. Uh, this plugin creates one one table, one book table. Uh, previously, it used to it was done using a, an event handler, uh, but the version eight way of doing things is to use component composers and components. Uh, I took the opportunity to switch the event handler to also use a migration plan uh, as that seems to be the preferred way to, to handle database changes. So what we have now is uh, we have a, a database composer where we create our database entities in a component. We take a look at the component. Uh, there's a number of items that are now pulled in uh, by dependency injection uh, that are required. But uh, we just follow a basic pattern, which uh, is to uh, implement the initialize event to do a, a migration plan, which uh, which will then do a migration on the database, which was uh, this one's named version version two, and 
the migration of the database. Uh, all it does in this case is check if a book table exists uh, or doesn't exist. Uh, then it will uh, create the, the book table. And we can see that uh, in SQL Server, uh, it will lead to this book table being created. And also in the key value, umbrical key value table, we'll see that uh, our migration plan will be launched there uh, to assist with any uh, future updates and changes or migrations to the, the database. So uh, that's the database taken care of. The next thing that uh, we need to look at is the controller APIs on. In this case, uh, specifically the repository. Uh, previously, this was implemented just uh, accessing a, a static database uh, property uh, that uh, was made available to allow use of uh, Petapoco. Uh, it's now uh, NPoco that is used and the guidance is that uh, when you access uh, the database you should always do it via a scope uh, and the, the recommendation was generally to uh, generally to inject a scope provider when you need it. Uh, I initially did that but uh, I find that uh, it, it caused problems on the uh, front end templates that use repositories because they would need a scope provider to be injected. And it's not uh, easy to do that uh, in Razor templates that aren't built on uh, .core. Uh, so what I did instead was I I stopped injecting the iScope provider and just uh, accessed a, a static uh, method that I'll uh, return a scope. Uh, so generally in the repository, uh, all the methods were updated to acquire a scope, access the database offer and uh, perform the database operation. So you'll see that for insert, delete, uh, test for exist and uh, running queries. Uh, the syntax is pretty much the same in NPOCO as uh, El Petipoco. Uh, and that is the, that's the repository taken care of. The next thing that we wanted to look at was the creating a tree in the, the back office. Uh, there was a slight change to the tree attributes and slight change to get menu for nodes so the uh, syntax of adding uh, new menu items had changed. The tree node collection, that, that stayed uh, uh, the same, so that, that was uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, so that uh, that brings us to a close on uh, basically the server side changes. Uh, so that's all the C sharp back end DLL stuff taken care of. Uh, then we look at uh, what the angular changes should be. Uh, so that's our client section. And the main changes, uh, the main changes in here were to the scaffolding directives. Uh, so the things that created tabs, uh, things that presented panels, uh, stuff like that and largely the changes were due to yeah the different look and feel of Umbrico 8 so there was new CSS classes uh, 
new kind of HTML templating scaffolding. Uh, so uh, the directories that I had and for the version seven, I basically either upgraded or created new equivalent. So tabs, for instance, was a, a directive. Uh, we have different classes used, but the main body is pretty much the same. Although the active class had changed. Uh, but yeah, uh, a little bit of tinkering and essentially the, the, the tab mechanism is much the same. Uh, then uh, for creating edit screens or list screens, what I uh, what I created was a panel flex box, uh, just to create one editable uh, screen. And uh, the beauty of that is uh, in any of our uh, editable screens, we can just use these directives to give the boilerplate and my particular boilerplate, uh, I make use of the flex grow and reflex, uh, basically in the template uh, that allows the container to take the whole of the screen and also allows for the buttons to be positioned at the bottom. Uh, I also make use of a couple of flags uh, that allow different sections of a tab to display or not based on whether the we've got pre values for all the controls on the, the template available from the server or not. If we don't have pre values, then uh, we have a spinner directive that just gives the user some feedback as to where we are. So uh, uh, one of the one of the main directives, which was the book editing directive. Uh, we'll just take a quick look at what might have changed. Uh, so what we see here, there's, there's basically four, four different modes. Uh, list mode, an edit mode, a create mode, the new mode, and this template will just uh, show the relevant section in the tab, but they all kind of follow the, the similar, similar kind of property that uh, uh, we'll have a, a group panel with a header and some content and displays a property. And uh, that's that. And then we'll have a section for buttons at the bottom, so the buttons are uh, bottom right, and that uh, that's how we get uh, we get there to the, the tabs. So we can look at uh, the higher level, the books catalog, for instance. What we can see is this is a general template for any kind of tab. Uh, the whole tab is a dashboard that has a header and the header contains the tabs that we pull in for that and then the body is the actual panel itself uh, which becomes a dashboard. I've got this panel flex box which has the title uh, and then we have the the directive to actually do the functionality of the tab. So uh, if we had a, a look, uh, then we can see that this is the title, and then this is the content. So this part here is all just done by the GT books and Let's say that that creates the four different modes of the screen. And so we can see that for all the tabs, 
we tab this structure and then we just put our own functionality for a specific tab into our directive for that tab. So if we, if we look at one of the other ones, uh, we'll see it's, it's quite similar. Uh, we have the tabs, uh, we have our flex box, uh, and where well, this was GT booked before, uh, this is just a sample, so I just put in a GT hello for a small uh, sample uh, directive and then a sample uh, button just to show that the, the layout uh, works fine. And that, that completes the, the HTML change. Uh, if we look at the the actual Angular JavaScript, the, the changes to that were quite minimal. Uh, main one I think for this was just uh, the dialogue service is no longer present, so that switched to the editor service. And then uh, the editor service was used just to confirm deletion of a, a book. So uh, the syntax here changed uh, from template becomes view, and then we indicate a size of the pop-up. And then uh, we link uh, an accept, I, I want to delete, to a submit uh, handler. And if we cancel, uh, the delete then we link that to a, a close handler and for both the submit and the close after you do your functionality uh, you have to close the service uh, manually that was previously taken care of within the service uh, before so yeah you can see here had to add the service close and that that was largely all that uh, that changed in in uh, the directive for the, the books editing uh, and the final final part that uh, that did change was the CSS uh, tended to add some some new classes uh, to support the, the new style and some of the the old Umbrico classes had gone, so we just wanted like table style in the same, just bring them uh, back in. Similar for dashboards, uh, uh, a little bit of change, uh, not, not, not too much. And that uh, essentially completes the client side. So that was a server on the client side, changed uh, the actual build process and, and release is all. Uh, all unchanged and that basically completes the migration of the, the plugin.